Okay, can everybody hear me? Yep. Good. Okay, uh, we'll get started. It looks like everybody's here except for Director Yazbek, and I know that he'll be joining us at some point. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and call to order the uh, October 28, 2020 uh, meeting of the Royal Oak Downtown Development Authority. Um, at this time, I'm going to take a roll call. Uh, Director Krieger? Here. Director Baglio? Here. Director London? Here. Director Rosbeck? Here. Director Brake? Present. And Director Riley? Here. And we do not have uh, Director Yasmik here yet. Okay, I believe uh, Carol informed us that there is uh, no public comment that was received for this meeting. So I'm gonna move on directly to item uh, number four, which is Royal Oak Jingle 2020. Um, Sean, I, do you or Tim wanna lead us off on this? I'll let Sean, he's had more con conversations with uh, Joel okay. than I have. Sean, you're muted. Can you bring, uh, you, I think you wrote the memo, so let's, uh, we'll start with you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, let me pull up the memo here. Um, so uh, uh, before the board is a proposal for the Jingle Holiday event from 360 Events. Um, um, it previously had been discussed by the Consumer Marketing Committee uh, who recommended uh, it go to the DDA board for consideration. Um, and uh, per the, the cover letter here, which was submitted by the executive director, um, Chief O'Donoghue indicated that the police department had not yet received an application for a special event permit. Um, so there was, uh, there was no, uh, no comments from the police department as far as that goes. Um, now the DDA does have a, uh, an existing agreement with uh, 360 events currently for the jingle event. I think it's, uh, I believe it's a two year agreement. Um, you know, obviously with COVID, uh, it was originally considered that it would be, uh, it would be canceled along the spooktacular, uh, but the Consumer Marketing Committee had uh, recommended the, uh, the proposal uh, move forward for the, the board's consideration. Uh, we do have Julie Law on the, uh, on the Zoom meeting as well. So if okay. she could walk the board through any specific details uh, contained in the presentation, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I think uh, you know she might be able to provide some better insight as, as far okay. as- Okay, sounds good, thank you. So uh, moving forward here, here's how I'm gonna proceed. Uh, I'm gonna bring Julie in uh, to give us a, pre, a brief uh, presentation uh, and then I'll open it up to the floor for uh, questions and comments for Julie, and then we'll bring it back to the table uh, eventually for consideration. So, uh, Julie, if you can hear me, um, Julie, are you with us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Um, so, I'm going to let you start out here, okay? And then uh, again, we'll uh, we'll let you speak, and then uh, I'm sure the board's going to have some some questions. Uh, uh, for you, and then we'll bring it back eventually for consideration. So um, anything that you want to add at this point? Sure. I don't know if everybody had a chance to review the um, presentation, but just to give a quick overview of it, it would be very, I don't want to say very similar, but it would be similar to uh, the Royal Oak jingle that we had last year, where we incorporated a cookie crawl with the retailers on Saturday from noon to six. The difference with that um, is we would sell tickets in time slots versus just selling um, you know, tickets as a whole and, and they can check in between noon and six. This will help stagger um, our guests and um, you know, we'll encourage everybody to follow the map in, in you know, a certain route uh, versus just kind of going everywhere. And again, that will help um, you know, kind of keep your traffic levels at a consistent pace inside of the retailers. Uh, later on that evening, rather than doing an actual parade, um, we can do a strolling parade. So I've been in contact with 
Uh, the parade company, they, they would have some floats available. And what we would do is position those around town in different, different spaces and encourage guests to you know, walk around and look at the, um, the floats in all the different areas. And obviously that would also encourage shopping and dining that evening. Each area would be programmed um, with community uh, entertainment. We, you know, there were so many community organizations that participated in the parade last year that are you know, inquiring, are we doing this event again? I think there's a way to incorporate them um, in these spaces and again, time slot it. So the bell choir could do you know, uh, 30 minutes next to float number one. Um, you know, the, the Girl Scouts could do something over at float number two. And then each area would also be, um, you know, lit up, illuminated. I've spoken to um, the lighting company that does the zoo, uh, Wild Nights at the Zoo, along with they did the mapping program um, on the Detroit uh, uh, train station last year when Ford bought that and uh, did a whole mapping program. So what we would do is have a music element um, with lighting that would be synchronized in those spaces in addition to some other, you know, live music. Again, the whole point is to get people to stroll. Things will change in different areas as far as, you know, all the different time slots to keep people moving throughout town that evening. And then Santa Claus, you know, we definitely, Santa, Santa Claus is a big part of Christmas, a big part of Jingle. So um, putting Santa Claus, <laughs> which I've had a conversation with Santa Claus, putting Santa Claus either up on um, a very unique display or inside a snow globe to where kids could still see Santa, stand in front of this design um, area, take their photo with Santa, et cetera. Um, and then we would have the live reindeer on site. So that's the quick overview. It would be one day, and um, but it would be a long program day. And what what where do, what day do we have that scheduled and time frame, Julie? Uh, we good? have it on December twelfth. And I also in the beginning I heard um, Sean mention that there hasn't been a special permit uh, submitted. I did speak to the Royal Oak Police Department several times, uh, and until we have, you know, a con confirmation that we're doing this, I can't submit something. Um, so if we were to get approval today, then that would be my first, um, you know, thing of action in the next couple of days to get with the police department. And okay. it, it, Sergeant Tykow did say that he believes that we should do something um, for the holiday season. Okay, well, and what's the time frame on December the 12th? Uh, so Cookie Crawl would start at noon, end at six, and then all of the other programming elements that I was speaking of would start at six. Obviously to stage these floats and lighting and everything will take, take some time. So there is a possibility we would have to load some of these elements in on Friday. But for it to be, um, for the public's sake, it would be from six to 10. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, questions for Julie? Uh, Director Rosbeck. Hi, Julie. Um, in looking at the proposal, um, I think the mapping is really cool, but is that really indicated in your budget? No, that, if, you, if you wanted to do, and I think I put that in, in, the, yeah, in the text above, if you wanted to do the full mapping where they, they take a building, they put it in a computer and create like a 20 minute show, that is $25,000 extra for a $4,000, or I'm sorry, for a 4,000 square foot building. Now that's not negotiated. That was a quote that I received from the company. Um, but I know in years past that has been an interest. So I wanted to include that in this proposal. But, it, but it's not part of your 82,000 that you're asking for. Uh, actually, I'm only asking for 70. That's my full budget is 80. Okay. So um, 360 would be responsible for that additional. But yes, if, if we did want to do the mapping, I would be asking for an additional 25,000 or whatever I can get that down to. So let's say I can negotiate $20,000 $20, for that mapping, then that would be the additional cost. Okay, uh, Director Riley. Do, Julie, does the mapping, uh, is that like a, a one night deal or you get it and you can use it for as long as you want? I mean, 
would it be a holiday season thing, 25,000 for building or 25,000 for that night? So they told me that was for that night. Now that's just one company. Um, I think it's steep, but until I start talking to other companies and getting comparison, I can't really, um, I really can't say, but they're saying that's one evening. I would like to negotiate that at least into, you know, a multi, even if it was Friday, Saturday or Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but I can't promise that until I, I get to work on that. Okay. Um, any other questions for Julie? Okay, I'm seeing none right now. Um, um, in can, can I? Sure, just, go ahead. Greg. So, um, in terms of Santa, I, I appreciate you saying, you know, Santa would be in this bubble because, you know, I do know that the large department stores are canceling their Santa displays this year. So, um, I guess I'm, I'm still trying to understand how, even though we protect Santa, how do we protect people from lining up and not staying socially distant? Yeah. Or do you have a plan for that? Yeah, I mean, so we encourage, um, you know, obviously we're gonna encourage all the, the health measures. And, you know, what I'm finding is people are understanding that this is, this is the new way, right? So people are, I've, I've held other events uh, during COVID and, uh, you know, the, for the most part, everybody's very respectful and they know the rules. So we would have signage and spacing, you know, um, marks on the ground to encourage, encourage that. We have had Santa um, the past couple of years and because he's been there for a four hour time block, honestly, we've never really had big lines and we do it pretty quickly. I mean, you're just snapping a picture and moving on. So I don't really... Yeah, I think this year you might have big lines because everyone else is canceling Santa. Right. That's, I guess, my concern. And we always man that area as well. So it's always staffed. You know, before we've had it inside a, a vacant forest st a storefront that we ended up decorating. And um, we always have it staffed. We have someone at the, you know, the front of the door and someone with Santa. So that would be the same this year. Okay. Um... Anything else? Want, yeah, Director London. I just wanted to add, I think on our signage or either advertising it or at the event, we should say mass required. It is an open county mandate. Correct. Yep. Anything, okay. anything that is, you know, obviously these keep changing, but whatever the current status is, is what we would, we would um, have promoted. Well, even if it's not a regulation, it's still a gathering of lots of people. Mm-hmm. So I would still encourage it. Right. So, yeah, okay. Um, I guess I'll, I'll chime in here while we're waiting here. Um, uh, I have had a numerous discussion with uh, uh, a bunch of business owners in town and some uh, even at the city level uh, and administration also. Um, there does seem to be somewhat of a concern uh, that I wanted to pass on to the DDA for its consideration uh, with the COVID situation and with the uh, rising numbers that are uh, uh, happening on a daily basis right now. And the consideration is to, you know, where, where we potentially may or may not be uh, 30 days from now or on December or 30, on December the 12th, where are we going to be? What position are we going to be in at that point? Um, some of the comments that I've received, and again, I, I obviously this is one of those situations where, you know, everybody has opinions in, in both directions, uh, but I, I want to share as much information as I can uh, with the DDA for its consideration. Um, I do know that, uh, we do know that downtown Rochester, uh, typically has a, a similar event and uh, they have canceled their event for this year. Uh, the city of Detroit is revamping their event um, uh, to do some sort of virtual type event, which I'm not real familiar with, but I do know that that's happening also. Uh, and then I have also heard about some communities that are um, in essence, kind of postponing their holiday events uh, 
till after the first of the year um, and possibly doing uh, substituting them with winter type festivals. Again, if if the if the numbers are allowed and if we're not in a, uh, any type of uh, uh, health type situation. Um, so there is a lot of rescheduling. There is a lot of canceling. There is some rescheduling. Um, I guess one of my concerns would be uh, for the DDA's consideration is I kind of don't want to be the the only the only person that's standing out on the platform alone uh, in this. Um, um, I'm just not sure where that would lead us. Um, now the canceling of other events could bring more people to Royal Oak, and you could look at that in two different ways. One that could be good uh, to have more exposure to Royal Oak, but uh, the more people that come, the more potential for exposure there is also. So um, these are just items that I wanted to pass on to the DDA uh, for their consideration. Um, I see Director Riley's hand. Yeah, um, I, I, have to, I have to agree with, with, with Chairman Shafaya. Um, you know, a couple of things. One, I, I mean, it's, it's October 20, what is it today? October 28th, 27th, whatever. Um, and we're at the 11th hour and we don't, you know, we don't, we don't, it doesn't sound like we have, we have a firm plan in place for, for what this day is going to look like. Um, you know, I heard Julie say we can do a strolling parade. Um, there's things about permits. I think that, you know, the, 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 the taste that, that this, this entire board had for events throughout the uh, pandemic, you know, has been, you know, to, to, to mitigate uh, risk and, and to not commit ourselves to certain things that can um, not, not, not work, let alone blow up in our face. Um, you know, there were over 3,000 cases today. Um, you know, people are talking about, forget about shutting down. I mean, you know, yesterday, Chicago shut down indoor dining. Um, people are, uh, the, are going to back to curfews. Um, there's a, a lot of different areas are, are going to back to close to lockdown mode. And there is, you know, uh, I, I, I saw an article today where the governor was talking about, you know, going back to shutdown. Um, you know, 3,000 cases in one day, um, and, and they think it's going to go up, you know, they, they, felt, they felt it would go up later in the fall as opposed to now, and, and to roll the dice and hope that six weeks from now we're going to be cool, um, I, I don't think it's going to get any better. I think it could get significantly worse. That being said, I, don't, I, don't, I, I think that we've done a lot of good things um, in, in, in the downtown area and with commerce with, with, without events. And, and I think this is the absolute wrong time to go back to an event. And I'm not speaking about this event at all. I just think any event at this point. Um, I mean, God forbid, well, you know, God forbid we did it and, uh, and it was successful because we were the only one and we had an outbreak. Um, that, uh, that, that would undo a lot of goodwill that we've done in the past and, and I'm not willing to take that risk. Um, and at the same time, there's a lot of ideas that, that we've tossed around um, that I think could really help, particularly retail, um, during, during the holiday season without a one night uh, risk factor. I mean, the, 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 and, and that would be totally family oriented. I would prefer if we were gonna spend the money that we, that we spend the money spread out throughout, you know, from Thanksgiving through Christmas on, on getting people into retail and, 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 and getting people into town and, and you know, if we wanted to give out, and I'm not, believe me, I'm not trying to marginalize it at all, but if we wanted to give out cookies, we provide the cookies to the retailers to give the kids when, when, when they come in throughout the whole month. Okay, uh, Director Baglio. Um, I'm gonna, I don't, know, I don't know if I'm gonna make this in the form of a motion or a suggestion, um, but it's somewhat of a compromise. Um, Julie works very hard. We do have a contract with her um, ho however, I have to agree that now is not the time to do an event. However, um, she has some amazing ideas in terms of projections. And even though that is not in the current $70,000 budget, I'd like to propose a compromise that we take a good portion of that money, um, allow Julie some sort of uh, management fee and have her work on projections 
for next year's event. Um, and and that's, it, that'd be something that's spread out from Thanksgiving through New Year's with these projections. Get Gary, ahead of the Gary, game. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, when you're saying projections, do you mean projected images? Correct. Okay. So now, okay. now um, I, I'm sure most of you are aware, but my term expires at the end of the year. And in, um, I won't be on the board to make these recommendations anymore, but I would like to leave my legacy. And my legacy has always been lighting and projections. Um, what I envision are projections designed to project on the new city hall and possibly the Henry Ford building so that they're visible from the, mid, from the middle of the park. And let's take some of this money that we could have used this year, give it to Julie to do, start now and do it right for next year. Um, I don't know if I need to formalize that in the form of a, a motion or if I, how, tell, somebody tell me how to do it, but. My, get, my I, suggestion here, and, and I, I see a couple of hands up here, but my suggestion to you, Gary, and I, I agree with you 100%. I, I would be totally supportive of what you're trying to achieve here. Um, mm -hmm. But as opposed to the, the board looking at this right now and shifting money here and there, I really believe it does need to go back to committee for a formal recommendation to come back to the board with an outline of exactly what you're talking about. Um, um, I think that would be the best action to take. Um, if, if, but in terms of a formal motion, um, I think you need, we need to get a little bit deeper into that. And I would like to see the committee meet with Julie and come up with that exact type of plan that you're talking about uh, and get it going right away. I agree with that. You know, that would be, that would be an awesome thing to do. So uh, let me go to a couple people here and get some thoughts. Uh, Director Rossman. Um, chairman, Mr. Chairman, I, I think what, instead of going back to committee, I think what Gary's trying to do is maybe try to formalize something that we can get started today with the budget we've already approved. Um, and, and I agree that the committee can work on a, a more detailed plan of that, but since the proposal did include this projection this projection mapping or this video mapping that that Gary's talking about I'm I could we make the motion to say we we move you know we motion to look into just video mapping and projections on our on our uh, buildings for this holiday season and for see what 70,000 gets us he said for next season he's saying for next season I know he's saying for next season, but I'm thinking, why couldn't we do that now and not have a formal event? I guess that's that's where I'm I'm going with this because then her permitting isn't as um, uh, isn't really shutting down streets and things like that or 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 uh, other places. So. And, just and, and, and that I, was, I, that I, was, I uh, Director Osbeck, I, I, I agree with you. I, I, I don't. Have, I have no problem with us looking at it, whether it be right away for this year, or, or even for next year. Um, I'm not sure that Mr. Twing is going to, uh, and I'll let him weigh in on this in terms of um, he's going to want some money. If we're going to vote on this, he's going to want some money directed, a specific amount of money directed to a specific. Uh, allocation. Uh, I believe that's what he's going to tell us here in a minute. Um, Can I just interject something real quick? Go ahead, Director Baglio, and then I'll go to Director Riley. The park's not open yet, so I don't know that we can do what is in my head okay. this year. Um, and I'll leave that to Mr. Twing. Yeah, okay. I guess I'm, I'm thinking we still have a city hall, a city court, and a farmer's market you could probably project on and be a little a little like what you're doing from a from a city park perspective. That's okay. all. And, and, uh, and Director Riley. Yeah, the, 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 that was that, that was one of the reasons why I asked the question of the twenty five thousand dollars. Was that for one night or for the whole season? And 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 unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't we don't have the answers to that right now. So I don't see how we can vote on anything without knowing the parameters of what. And 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 for the record, 
it was not included in the, in, in, uh, in the it was an ancillary item in the proposal. The 70,000 was for the jingle budget, which was, which was on this. So it was just kind of like a throw in item for the night. Uh, while I think it's a really cool idea, um, I, 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 and number two, I, I don't know that I'd agree with lighting those buildings right now where everything, you know, there's a lot of construction going on over there and you can't even get near City Hall. Um, I would think that if you were going to do it, if somebody put a gun to my head and said, you got to spend $50,000 on mapping, you would do it in the downtown area around where, where people are going to be, unfortunately. But, but, but I think, I don't, I, I, I look, I, 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 I love, I love lighting and decoration and I love director Braglio's um, idea and vision. And especially in those two buildings, I think forcing it into this year at the last minute, particularly when, I don't know, you know, we're not meeting until November and we don't know the parameters. I, I got no problem if we spend the money, but I think there's some better ways we could spend the money that, that make it a, a better situation. Okay. Um, Tim, did you want to add anything at this point or? Uh, well, I think it's a, a, a good discussion, but I would point you back to the actual proposal that's in front of you as the first action in terms of either rejecting and or terminating the idea of any kind of doing an event. Uh, and then you can deal with a second motion in the sense of having the committee work with Julie towards, uh, you know, I don't know that it's even possible for her to do uh, uh, video mapping on a larger scale, uh, but I, I would agree with Matt and the other comments that if the committee can work it out with Julie and Julie could come back and you wanted to spend the full 70,000 on video mapping, um, you know, maybe that proposal could be in front of you at your November meeting and the video mapping occurs over, you know, a couple of days, but you need to work those details out before you can actually vote on that. Cause I, I'm not sure what you would be getting uh, for 70,000. So I, I don't know how you would vote on that today. Um, I, I would point you back to the actual proposal that's in front of you and say, is that something you want to go forward with or is it not? Deal with that. And then uh, uh, Julie can always meet with the committee and uh, uh, bring something back to you. Okay. Uh, director, uh, I'm going to go to Director Yesbeck and then I'll go to Director Rosbeck. Mm -hmm. Director Yesbeck. You're muted. Tony. Sorry. There you go. It, uh, it sounds like the, uh, the feeling of the board is, is not to proceed with this proposal at this time. But I, I'm, I'm, you know, the premise of the whole holiday event is not for the DDA just to do something, but it's to provide something for the city that that is a, a, a community gathering uh, opportunity, uh, something very nice, something that that this community can get excited about, and and I think those things are even more important after this disastrous year that we've had. It's very some very essential to provide something that the city can look forward to and get excited about. So. I would be very opposed to saying, you know, we're rejecting this proposal. What I would like to do is say, let's postpone this proposal, if that's the feeling of the board, and say, let's focus immediately on what we could do maybe in a few months after the first of the year when, when things calm down and we have time to plan better. Maybe it includes the lights, maybe it includes floats, who knows what it includes, but we can do something amazing. I think it's critical for the DDA to come up, not give up on the plan, but to come up with something that this community, that the city can get excited about participating in down the road. Okay, thank you. Director Rosbeck. Um, I was actually gonna make a motion to, uh, to vote against this proposal. That's that was my motion. Um, I, I asked the questions I asked because again, as a person who does not own a business on this committee, but I, I understand how, how important the holidays are for retail and for our restaurants. 
Um, I, I also work in healthcare, and I, um, I I am very cautious about bringing large groups of people into our city when a lot of cities are closing down these types of events. So um, I, I'm making a motion to not move forward with this proposal as it stands. Okay, uh, I have a motion on the table from Director Rosbeck. Is there a second? A second. Second by Director Krieger. Okay, any uh, questions or comments regarding this? Uh, Director Badlio. I wanna make sure that, you're, that, that we're voting against this proposal for this season and not forever. Was that proposed to this year? Okay. Yeah, that's, my, that's my understanding, yes. Okay. That's your understanding also. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Director Riley, did you have something that yeah, you wanted to Yeah, yeah. Um, um, Tim, it's a it's a it's a two year contract we have and, and the way I read it was that I mean we're not out any money under this circumstance, but we do have the contract for next year with, with, with Julie Law as well, correct? That's correct. I believe it actually even runs through 2022. I believe it's three years. I mean, it's attached to the end of your packet. Yeah, I got it right here. Yes, you're right. You're right. 2020, 2021, and 2022. Okay. Okay. And and, and there was there was a, a, a percentage on disbursement, but should the event be canceled or otherwise not occur, the event manager will fund all sponsorship funds. So, okay. So, so we have, so contract stays in place for the next two years, correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, Director Baglio. Can we do something similar to what we did with um, Rock and Rides and, and ABE and tack on this year to the end of Julie's contract? Uh, what do you mean? I'm sorry. Clarify yourself in terms of that. We've, her contract currently runs through 2022. Can we move to 2020 to 2023? In terms of the, the, not the money we're talking about, but in terms of the contract, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, I guess that. I mean, I, I, I guess that would be a separate motion that we could, we could, address, um, after addressing this motion, um, if that's the wishes of the board. Yeah, Mike. I, I would. I would suggest that could be separate. And we could actually revise the contract and bring it bring it back like we did with uh, the other one to actually add the extra wording into it. So I don't, I don't think there's any rush to take care of extending the contract at today's meeting, but uh, we can definitely uh, look at doing that for November's meeting. Okay. Okay. Um, any other discussion regarding the motion that's on the table? Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna call for the vote and I'm gonna do a roll call vote here. Uh, Director Rospick? Yes. Uh, Director Krieger? Yes. Director Baglio? Yes. Director London? Yes. Director Brake? I'm sorry, Director Brake. I said yes. Thank you. Uh, Director Yesvik? Yes. Director Riley? Yes. And I will vote yes also. Okay. That motion passes. So uh, moving forward here, I'm going to, uh, uh, the chair is going to just um, oh, recommend to that the um, Consumer Marketing Committee meet uh, at its earliest convenience and meet with uh, Julie uh, and hopefully come up with maybe some alternative and some proposals uh, and some time frames, uh, and get those back to us as quickly as possible. Um, if that's agreeable to everybody. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you very much. And thank you, Julie. Appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. Okay. Tim, I understand we have uh, a couple of items of additional business. Yeah, uh, I think I'll take the probably the simpler ones uh, first. I know uh, we've got three things to talk about. One I sent out uh, in regards to 
a proposal for some survey work on the alleys um, south of third to fourth, the alley from uh, fourth to fifth, and then what, as well as the adjacent parking lots. Uh, the proposal broke each one of those down in terms of the survey work that would be done, uh, the topographic survey work. The intent of that survey work is to do the improvements in those alleys, have engineering um, uh, put together to plan for repaving it and, re and reworking those alleys. Um, the question I was going to ask the board today was whether or not you wanted us to proceed with all of them or with just the one from third to fourth and potentially the parking lot behind the rock uh, as the first block or whether you wanted to do all of them at one time. Uh, I believe the total cost is $7,500. Uh, but that's why I wanted to bring it and they were going to have it get started here shortly so I didn't want to wait till November's meeting. Okay. Um, Director Krieger. <clears throat> so I would I would like to see us move forward with this if possible. Those those alleys have been uh, a, a pain for us for a long time. They're blighted, they need work. And we've talked we've spoken about it for, for years now, I think. And seventy five hundred bucks is uh, a pretty small dollar amount to get that going and get, get it off center. So I'd make them, uh, if we need a motion, I'd make a motion to spend the money to get uh, all of those alleys that are listed in this memo surveyed. Okay, uh, I have a motion by Director Krieger. Uh, second, is that correct, Director Brake? Yes. Okay, and I have a second by Director Brake. Uh, I'm gonna go to Director Riley first. Yeah, and then I'll just piggyback on, on what Director Krieger said. Um, the, the, the bottom line is we're going to end up doing, I mean, we, we all believe this is one of the most important things we can do. And those survey prices are only going to go up if we only do part of it this year and, and, and then go into it next year. So let's get it all done now. And, and I do like the fact uh, that, that, it, that it'll get us off point. Yeah, it's cheaper to have them mobilized once. So let's yep. just get it done. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Director Yesbeck, did you have something on that? I, I couldn't tell. I was going to second, and so, yes, say all the same things. Okay. Um, any other comments? Questions? I will add, uh, 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 Tim and Director Brake, uh, um, I have noticed that uh, code enforcement has actually uh, stepped up very well uh, in the uh, alley behind um, the Salvation Army, the Rock in that alley, and met and dealt with some of the problem business owners and the dumpsters uh, and some of the activity that was going on in that alley. It has improved considerably. Um, I don't think it's all the way there 100% yet, but they definitely have made an improvement and the business owners are uh, uh, seem to be cooperating. Um, so that, I just wanted to bring that to your attention as a positive note. Um, I think as we move forward with going uh, down the other alleys, uh, code enforcement will have to be involved again um, uh, to make sure that the, the business owners are, are doing what they're supposed to be doing and cooperating. So uh, on that you're, note. Um, you're correct, uh, Mike. Uh, you're, you're correct. Code enforcement has been out. There are several issues once we get the survey work done that we will meet with the infrastructure committee on uh, to see what the design might look like uh, and what improvements uh, you're gonna wanna see in each one of those. So uh, the survey work is the first part of that. Okay, and then Tim, just, I don't know if you could, add, just a quick question. So when you, when you speak of the, the parking lot, the two parking lots that are being uh, planned to be surveyed, what, what kind of improvements are we looking at there? Just um, well, the, the master plan that the DDA had done uh, oh, last spring last year um, included uh, some discussion of how to deal with the recycle uh, materials and the refuse materials and some other things. And part of that may include an encroachment into uh, one or both of those parking lots. Um, so in order to plan for that and screen for that, do some of those things, we uh, it makes sense to 
at least do the survey work in the parking lots as well. Uh, again, but this is going to come back to the board as to what you want to see in terms of improvements. Minimally, they're going to get repaved and the stormwater work would probably be included, things like that. But okay, good. It's going to come back to you guys. Good. Okay. So we have a motion and a second on the table. I'm going to do a roll call vote here. Um, Director Krieger? Yes. Director Brake? Yes. Director Rosbeck? Yes. Thank you. Director London? Yes. Uh, Director Baglio? Yes. Director Yesbick? Yes. Director Riley? Yes. And I will vote yes also. Motion passes. Uh, the next the next one I just want to bring up real quick for so everybody's on the same page and clarify um, the holiday slash Christmas tree contract with AV7 lapsed. Uh, if there was going to be a tree lighting this year, it was going to be coordinated by the farmer's market. Uh, I put a request into Shelley to see if there was anything happening with that. But just so I just want to make sure the board's on uh, recalling for the holiday season. There is, there is no uh, tree going up uh, from the DDA this year. And then I believe Sean had uh, another communication he sent out in regards to the IFTI program and uh, some actions there, but I'll let him walk through that. Okay, uh, Director Baglio. I have a question, uh, Tim, what, what happened? I know that uh, 87 stored the tree, what happens to it? Um, well, I've put an inquiry into Shelly at the farmer's market to see if they wanted it for this year. Other than that, I would work with DPS and AV7 to, to get it and potentially store it at uh, Waterworks Park or, or somewhere. The reason I ask is um, uh, I, I, I shared an email with several of you uh, regarding a wholesale lighting company and they have pole trees and the frame of the tree that we own would be a spectacular um, it could be retooled inexpensively to, to be a um, electronic pole tree. So if you can, if we could keep it and somehow uh, reuse it, I would um, hope we could do something like that. Great. Okay. Anything else on that? Just real quick, can I ask a quick question? Um, for the downtown lights, are, are those going ahead as, 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 as they were last year? Yes. Yes. Okay. I just want because uh, and I forgot now the lights stayed in the trees, right? So all they have to do is wrap. So that's why we haven't seen them out yet, right? Okay. Okay. Um, Sean, did did you want to go next, Sean? Uh, sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so uh, last night I sent out a communication to the board that uh, included a cover letter and a revised agreement with YIFTI regarding the holiday card programs. So uh, first off, uh, thank you to the executive director and the chair for working with me earlier this week. Uh, so we could, I could put this together and send this out to the board. And thank you to the board for making time to discuss this. Um, I kind of feel like at the 11th hour, as we were implementing um, this program, um, we were at the stage where we were putting together the written agreement that would reflect what the board decided on October 14th. And we wanted to have an agreement that uh, essentially ref reflected the parameters of what the board approved so that uh, the executive director could review and sign it. And we uh, hit the ground running with implementing the program. Um, unfortunately, uh, as we were working on putting together this written agreement, um, there, were, there was some new information that uh, came to light that substantially altered um, a lot of the parameters of what the DDA approved. And so uh, the executive director and I felt it best that we resubmit this uh, for the DDA's approval. Now there's actually a, a, a number of changes uh, to this. Um, and I think this is probably the most pedantic resolution I've ever written, but I wanted to make sure that it laid everything out and was as transparent as possible. Um, but uh, after working with representatives from YIFTI, um, a couple of, or a few things, uh, uh, basically need the board's blessing to change 
what they had approved on October 14th. Um, the first thing, and I think it's probably one of the more significant things, is that uh, when the board approved the program, it was uh, supposed to be a 100% match. So if a consumer went to our website and followed the links to buy a gift card for $25, they would get an additional $25, so they'd get a $50 card that they could send anywhere. I think uh, the most notable change to this is that EFT came back and contrary to what they had told us earlier, uh, they can uh, not put the bonus dollars and the purchased dollars on the same card. Uh, so what that means is, is that if I were to buy a $25 gift card, I would get that $25 gift card, I could send it to anywhere I want, uh, but that $25 bonus that would be supplied by the DDA, that would be a separate card. Um, and so that changes things because it changes the fee uh, schedule because now we're not getting charged for one card, um, we're getting charged for two. Uh, secondly, um, the, there's a bit of a rate change. Uh, we were originally paying 3% of the value of the cards that we were giving out and we were being charged 25 cents per card. Um, we had prepaid all of that um, EFD had informed us that there's, uh, if, if there are private purchasers coming and paying with a credit card, uh, that their fee will have to be 5%, otherwise they are actually losing money per card. Um, I will say, uh, additionally, um, I noticed that our EFD account was not getting refunded with the value of the expired cards uh, after October 13th, which is when uh, we had all expected them to start refunding our account. Um, so Yifty clarified that to me uh, yesterday. And they basically explained that because of their reliance on MasterCard, um, although those the gift cards we gave out expired on October 13th and 14th and 15th uh, per the 90 day expiration time, uh, because they're, they are reliant upon MasterCard, uh, MasterCard doesn't officially expire the cards and refund them on a daily basis, they do it monthly. Um, and so we actually uh, wouldn't expect to see a refund uh, back to our account uh, until probably November 5th because of the, the processing times involved. Um, so I told her that it, uh, that it was actually quite inconvenient because we had approved all of this. I felt like we had gone through all of this with YIFTY um, and that there was no indication that there was this delay uh, so, uh, as a consolation, EFD has agreed to actually front us a portion of our budget uh, starting November 1st. So, we will be able to launch the program uh, as we had intended on November 1st. Um, and then the, the remainder of our funds will, will then credit our account uh, on a monthly rolling basis. Um, there is a recommendation from EFD that instead of us having the cards expire on June 30th, as the resolution on October 14th stated, that uh, if we wanted to ensure that none of the cards uh, bled over into the next fiscal year, that we, we try to make those cards expire a few days earlier, they recommended June 27th uh, just to be safe, so we had a buffer of a few days. Um, I think that covers the majority of, of the, the, the meaningful changes uh, to what to what I encountered earlier this week. Um, but uh, yeah, if the board uh, found these changes acceptable, uh, there is a resolution uh, prepared for its consideration. I know that the business marketing committee uh, had some recommendations they wanted me to look into, uh, two specific things. Uh, the first thing is, uh, was there a way for the DDA to cover 100% of the fees? And I talked to Donna uh, early this afternoon and she said, yes, indeed there was. Uh, there was a way to do that. So when consumers went to purchase a card, they would not be hit with the $1 per card or the 5% fee. Um, it could be set up where the DDA could cover that, uh, should the DDA elect to do that. Uh, and the second thing was, uh, is there the ability to put a cap per purchaser? Um, and I think it was, uh, it was recommended from the Business Marketing Committee of $1,000. Uh, and that's basically so that People can't buy a bunch of dollars, get a bunch of free money from the DDA, and then turn around and, and try to, you know, sell them at 75% of the value or something like that. So I had spoken to Donna about that. That is also something that they can do. So 
Uh, both of those things um, can be done by EFD. That's not included in the resolution before you right now, so that resolution would have to be amended uh, if the DDA uh, found those two changes acceptable. Um, I'm going to go with Director Rosbeck first. I've got a number of hands here. Just for a minute. Um, so, Sean, I think you uh, explained that pretty well. Um, my my bigger question is with the purchase cards, do you now have to go back to all the retailers and restaurants and let them know that they now potentially have to support this card up until whenever they don't expire? I mean, what is, what's the repercussion that someone doesn't want to take this card? Um, well, I think if somebody wanted to get out of the program, I think there's a way to keep them from uh, being a, a business that accepts those cards. So I don't, if they, if they really did want to leave the program, um, not sure why they would, it's free money. To um, right. they, there is an option to remove them. Um, secondly, when they signed up, we never gave them an exit. We never said you're in this program for X amount of days. Uh, we told cardholders that their cards were good for 90 days, but we never ended up, we, we never expressed to the business owners. We basically said, do you want to accept these cards? And they said, yes. Um, sure. Never said, do you want to accept these cards for a 90 day period and then be done? So in that sense, it's really open ended. I guess, I, I guess from the consumer's perspective, if you have a lot of participants drop out of this program, what's their, what's going to happen with these cards? That's, that's, I, if I spend money, $100 on a card for downtown Royal Oak, after a year, I don't use it. I don't know why I wouldn't use it in a year, but it happens. And then we have no, we don't have uh, any participants or we have maybe two participants and it's something they didn't really want. So I guess I'm just looking at that angle from the longevity of this program. I think it's a great program and I would hope that we don't have anyone drop out but we are in a very weird year. We're, this is a weird year for a lot of businesses and, um, it, and it is stressful. So I, I just want to understand that. I, I think what you've come back with is really great. So. Thank you. Um, Dr. London. Well, I want to address um, Jenny, Jennifer's concerns as a retailer. There's no downside to accepting the card. It's all positive. It's been a fantastic program. Thank you to Matt. Um, there's nothing negative about the program because even if they didn't use their card in my location, they still came to downtown Royal Oak and stopped at my store, stopped at the coffee shop. So they spent their money in more locations. So to me, it was a win, 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 win. There was no downside. But my question to Sean is if it's a MasterCard, is it, can, and I want to buy one, is it now accepted at all locations except MasterCard, but only the FD? Only the stores that said yes to the FD. So it's processed like a MasterCard. Um, the way that it's processed is like a MasterCard. Um, you actually have to be enrolled in the program. So you have to run that activation code on your point of sale system in order for it to recognize the, 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 the gift cards. So it's so can like- we add like more, Can we add more hair salons and more yoga studios? Yes, yeah. yes. There's nothing that prohibits us. I can go in website, log on to the dashboard, and I can start adding businesses, and it will email the business owner the activation code, and then they run it on their, their cash register, and then they're in. And it's that, it's frankly quite that simple. Uh, Mr. Chair, if, if I can respond to Director Rossback's uh, question. Um, uh, I think it's a hypothetical. Uh, that's definitely theoretically possible that people would want to drop out. I think we've just seen nothing but growth in this program. We have uh, well over 70 participants in this program, which I think um, is just un like amazing success. Uh, I of those 70 participants, 70 plus participants, um, I have not had any business owner come to me saying that they no longer want to be in the program. They don't like it. Um, in fact, the business owners that were highly skeptical of the program when they signed up because they have been part of gift card programs in the past came back to me later and told me how smoothly run of a, of a process it really is. And they were very pleased with it. Um, That's good to hear. So I've, I've heard a lot of great feedback from business owners. Um, 
nothing that would indicate to me that any time in the next three months, six months, that suddenly everybody would want to drop out. I think especially as we head into the winter months and we're going to see less foot traffic on the streets because of the weather, I think there may be some businesses who who will be thankful to see that their this program is still out and running to, to circulate dollars that can only be used down here. Um, so I, I think this will increasingly be looked at as an asset to businesses as we get into uh, colder weather. Good. Director Riley. Yeah, um, just a couple things. Um, yeah, I was, I, was, I was everything that I was going to say about that Mastercard. It is a Mastercard, but but it's just like. Um, everything else, you know, it's, it's dedicated. They can't spend it outside of Royal Oak and, and people have to opt in and be in the program. And, you know, I hope that everybody does stay in it. Um, you know, I think it's kind of, I think if they were accepting the $20 ones, I think that, you know, if you think about it, gang, the, the, the minimum card that's going to go out here, because we're offering 25, 50 and 100. So if you buy a 25, you're getting 50. Um, as far as the fees, uh, let me address a couple things. Um, the first 400 has all washed through and we'll be getting back 135,000, uh, of that money. Um, and we still have, uh, another 50,000 plus that's out there. If you do the same percentages in terms of what gets redeemed and what gets not, we'll end up with 166,000 back in our account. Okay. So that, that it's almost perfect. It covers if the 150, which I hope we sell 150,000 worth of cards and then we have 150,000 in our match. And then we have another 16,000 and I just ran the numbers. Uh, Sean did a great job negotiating the redo on the fees. Um, yeah, they're tagging us for the dollar card, but when you take the 5%, uh, the, the 5% really is two and a half percent because we're not paying anything on the match. And I understand why they're doing the 5% because they're going to have credit card fees on their end. But they're only charging that, you know, obviously on the purchase part. So just to give you an idea, if everybody, if everybody bought us out of $50 cards, that would come out to 13,500 in fees, uh, 3000 on their end for the cards, 3000 on our end for the match cards and 7,500 on their end for the 5% of the 150,000. So we're perfectly set up with that. Not to mention the fact that we still have money that we allocated that is sitting on account. Um, with the FT, which is about another thirty-six thousand dollars. Good, uh, thank sitting. you. Yeah, and uh, um, oh, one other Go thing. Ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let me just add the the thousand dollar max um, that I threw in there, and that uh, uh, that was uh, something I wanted to do to address one of the concerns of the consumer marketing committee that this be available uh, for more people, which is why they had originally suggested the fifty percent match. And after the meeting, I was kind of thinking about that and working that through. And I, and my, my feeling was that I wanted to prevent, you know, some, uh, some ne'er-do-well from getting some idea of setting up a cottage industry whereby, you know, if we exhaust 150,000, all of a sudden they're sitting on it and it's worth more um, than it originally was. In other words, you know, they could go online and, and end up, you know, selling these things for 75 cents on the dollar and, and make 25% um, of our money. So uh, I thought the thousand dollar purchase, you know, I thought about, you know, uh, a small business that wanted to take care of their employees and, you know, say they wanted to buy them hundred dollar cards or something that becomes $2,000, you know, if they have 10 employees, I thought that was reasonable. Um, interested to see what you guys think. Director Rossman. So I do know, I, I appreciate that thought, uh, Matt. Uh, I guess my other, my other question now um, with this purchase program, I, I do know that we support the DDA, but if we now are going to introduce a Royal Oak gift card, can we, can we open up that gift card opportunity beyond the the downtown and keep it to wow. royal oak businesses not the not the bonus money not any of the money that comes out of the downtown but anyone who purchases a card well that not not I, my my problem with that would be, I, I i i guess we could but we are we are the dda supporting the dda and that would really convolute the program in other words you could use this card 
if it was even legal to do it, I'm not sure. And, and I'm, I'm saying uh, after the bonus program, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not asking for you to do it while you have bonus money out in the in the marketplace. I'm I'm saying if we're gonna sell gift cards to Royal Oak, could we open this to more than just the downtown authorities businesses? Because these are people purchasing those and it would just behoove Royal Oak. But but our job as a board is to support the, the, the DDA area. I don't know. Well let, let's see if Sean can give us John, you want to give us a little clarity here, maybe? Yeah, I, I think the executive director could probably articulate this better than me, but I think so long as there is DDA money going to cover the fees and to be loaded onto the cards, um, we, uh, if somebody could accept the cards, um, they could accept both bonus dollars or purchased cards and the, their cash register doesn't recognize a difference. Um, so I think you would probably did want to do that, you'd probably have to take steps to get all DD money, DDA money out of the program. Um, and it could just operate independently uh, as something that YIFTI manages. Um, businesses outside the DDA could join, people could buy their own dollars, pay their own fees, and then they could use the cards throughout Royal Oak. But um, I think so long as there's DDA money going to the, the fees and going to the balance of on cards, I, I, I think that would be um, We'd, it would run the risk of spending money outside the district. That makes sense. Thank you. Okay, so Sean, just for clarity purposes, um, we have a suggested resolution and you said there was two items that really needed to be added to the, um, to the resolution at this time. Could you reiterate uh, those? Uh, yeah, so um, if, if the board saw fit to add two things, uh, which would be, um, trying to keep my train of thought. The first thing would be a thousand uh, dollar max uh, for uh, card purchasers. Uh, they wouldn't be able to buy more than a thousand dollars in cards. And then the, uh, the second item would be that the DDA would uh, assume the responsibility for the payment of all fees, both for the bonus cards and for the privately purchased cards. And, okay, and, and that's not the, part of the resolution as it stands right now. It's not presently part of the resolution that's before you now. And, okay. and I'm assuming that we have to put that in because we did agree on, 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 at the last meeting to cover the fees, but I'm assuming that we have to redo it because of the change in the of fees. Of the changes, yes. I asked Donna to put together a draft uh, contract that did include those recommendations just so we would have it ready, and she sent it over right before the meeting started, so. Okay. Okay, um, Director London. I wanted to um, do a resolution. I don't know okay. how to word it with the uh, add-ons to okay. change the previous resolution to include the thousand dollar limit and to, what about the fees? How do I say that? That the DDA would accept all fees for-, for Yeah, the DDA would accept all fees associated with the YFT card. Right. Um, okay, so I have a motion by Director London. Second. Second by Director Rossman. Um, any other further discussion <laughs> regarding this? I, I, I just I have a couple of questions. This has nothing to do with the resolution, and these are directed to Sean. Sean, um, assuming this, this gets passed, um, will we have talking points? Do you think maybe tomorrow, so we can start start promoting this because it's gonna it's gonna go November one, correct? which is Monday or, or Sunday yes. or Monday. Yes, I hoped actually to get talking points ready earlier this week, but because we had to renegotiate a lot of things, we wanna create talking points and then have them be no good, so. And, uh, and, and I'm assuming that we'll promote it through every uh, advertising avenue, and promotion avenue that we have, social media, Siren, uh, the different radios, and I see. Yeah, the ones that allow us to tailor our own message like that, that don't rely on like a right. commercial anything um obviously we wouldn't be able to change those so uh for like our our agreements with like red shovel media and intercom there are pieces of those agreements in which we give them just a pre-recorded commercial and they just run it on the radio but you know there's also opportunities in those agreements where you know they have a radio host talk about something in the morning or somebody talks about it on a podcast or something and, and i know you were working on this too in terms of the visit royal Oak website so that the home page Will we, will, will we be able to have an automatic click that goes right to the YIFTI site to purchase 
these cards? Yes, uh, I'm going to be meeting tomorrow with the 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 folks to get a uh, an estimate and get them all the the materials that they need to do it. Uh, a copy change on the website is actually pretty quick. We're not asking for a complete redesign. They're just going to change the wording and then add some links and some buttons. So um, I think that we can make that transition very quickly. Okay, and and, and the, the the thought process there, gang, is that we drive everybody to the Visit Royal Oak website where they say here here's the deals, here's the rules, here's the match you know, um, click this button and then they go right to EFD and they buy their card and then the other card get, get so they get sent out two cards in that case. Um, okay. Which is what we, I think a lot of us originally wanted to see the two card situation sure. anyway. So somebody can keep it. I know I do. Out. Sure. Okay. And yeah. then the last thing is, Sean, are we going to be able to um, measure the purchases um, on the dashboard easily? I mean that, I don't know whether you got the answer on that yet, but I don't have a firm answer on that yet in terms of, you know, we, we have some ability to measure, you know, what's in circulation now and where things are being redeemed. Um, so I, that's ongoing with Donna to see what can be provided to us in terms of where the matches go and where the purchase cards go. Um, so uh, if you'd like anything specific that we'd like to measure, I can, I can ask her specifically about it. Soon. Okay. Well, Mr. Can, Rosmick, hold oh, on. Sorry, can you, oh, sorry, can you clarify? The, did you just say there'll be two different designs, one for the bonus card and one for the normal card? Uh, I don't think there was, I don't think there's two okay. different designs. I think it's just two cards instead of one. The original proposal was that the, we were only, they were only getting a single card with double the amount, but now they're getting two separate cards. Yeah, I guess I'm asking, could we could we create a design for the bonus one so it's very clear to people that that's an expiring card? I have more of a that. holiday festive card. That could be part of my conversation with the, the graphic design slash web folks tomorrow when <laughs> I work out the, the quote and everything. I could I could include that in the ask. That's yeah, that's definitely possible. Sounds okay. good. Thank you. Yeah, one, uh, one, did you one have more, something, Director Riley? Before I yeah, one, one more thing. This is for Tim. Um, does it make a difference to you if we expire the uh, the match cards on six twenty seven or six thirty? No, just just so that it's before the beginning of the new fiscal year. In other words, as long as the expiration date is before the beginning, I mean, well, whether the money comes in three days later doesn't matter. Okay, in that in that case, I would recommend that we do six thirty because it goes through June that way. Okay. Uh, Director Baglio? I'm just thinking off the top of my head, and Lori, help me out here if I'm way off track, but the, the, du the double gift card thing. So you, you buy a gift card for $50, and then you get a new card for the exact same amount generated. So a total of $100. <clears throat> Several um, clothing lines that I purchased my phenomenal wardrobe from does something similar only they um, if I go in for example before the holidays they'll generate an additional $50 gift card for me to use at a date after the holidays in an effort to generate business during a slower period they do something similar after Father's Day um, in the summertime as well does it make would you entertain um, staggering the dates of the new card to generate business after the holidays at a slower period of time. Just a thought. I'm on the fence. Yep. Uh, here, here's my response to that. Um, a, a large part of this is, you know, is, is that these are, are gift cards for purchase for Christmas for people. So it's going to be used after the holidays. And, and again, I think it's already a little bit convoluted with the two cards and one's got an expiration date and one doesn't. I wouldn't want to convolute the start date and add, add, add another thing in there just to, just to make it a little more difficult. The, the, the th feeling behind the program was to spread the spending out, knowing that some people would buy them and use them right away by holiday gifts and others would buy them and give as holiday gifts Gotcha. in, in, an, attempt, in an attempt to do that. Yeah. My other concern, Gary, along that same lines would be that you know, I would walk in Lori's store and 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 buy fifty dollars worth of goods and realize I got the wrong card. 
You know what I mean? I've got the one that hasn't started yet or, you know what I mean? Uh, so the way they do it is when you buy $50 worth, then you get. Oh, it, so you you have to use up the one before you get the, to get. The no. Yeah, no. That, that seems to be complicated, but. Yeah, but but I I I guess Gary I I've been in those same I have those same gift cards, um, I guess I was thinking if I'm purchasing them like I I would be for my kids or something else, I would be keeping the ones that expire in six months versus the ones that don't expire because I purchased those so I don't I wouldn't worry about those someone walking around with that. That's why I, I suggested the two designs because I'd be concerned that I gave the wrong card away and they got the expired card and not my purchase card. Right. So that was Well Sean will look into that. And I think Gary, I, I think your 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 point is very valid, but I also agree with Matt that um, I think you're gonna we're gonna achieve the same thing that you want to achieve here. I think that that period, those extra cards mostly are going to get spent um, during that period that you're trying to get them spent in. Uh, that's my guess, you know, my conjecture. Um, I know that I plan on, you know, purchasing and, and using them for, for gift cards and I'm not going to hand them out until the 24th or the 25th or, you know, around that period of time. So I think that they will get spent, you know, during, during those periods that you're trying to achieve. <laughs> I also want to echo what Lori said. Kudos to Matt. This is a great program. It's very popular at my store. Yeah, I have. I've seen it all over too. In <laughs> fact, I just met somebody the other day that uh, uh, got one of the one uh, one thousand uh, dollar gift cards. So, uh, Sean, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I think I just wanted to add that I, you know, tracking the redemptions here, it looks like that uh, the redemption uh, levels are kind of U shaped in which when people initially get the cards, you see a big surge of spending, and then it drops off for a while. And then it, we, we see very few redemptions. And then as the cards are about to expire, it spikes again with the card usage. So because of that, you could draw a graph and it would be U-shaped in terms of the card usage. And if we're gonna give these out in November, December, and they're gonna expire in June, um, I mean, I would imagine that that U-shape would increase like January through March or January through April. So I know uh, historically, I think, um, you know, we don't have a lot of programs up and running in January and February. Those are kind of slow months for the downtown. But if we wanted to try to alter that U-shape to make it more even throughout those, those six months, maybe we could create some programs to work with some local businesses to create incentives for people to use their cards in January and February or something. And, and that would take that lull out of the card redemption period. Good input. Okay. I'm going to call for the vote here if, if we can. Um, uh, so we have a motion on the table. That's been second. I'm going to call for the vote now. Roll call vote. Uh, Director London. Yes. Uh, Director Rosbeck. Do I have Director Rosbeck? Yes. Sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, Director Bright? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Director Yesbeck? Yes. Director Riley? Yes. Director Krieger? Yes. And Director Baglio? Yes. And I will vote yes also. That motion passes. Can, can I, just, I just add one more thing? Sure. I got a couple of hands. Yeah. Go um, ahead, Matt, first. Go ahead. John, just reaffirming, we'll use uh, June 30th as the expiration date on the, uh, on, on, on the match cards. And I, I know you, you got a lot on your plate now, and this all came down to the 11th hour, so I don't want to put extra pressure on you. But let's, let's, let's angle for by, say, like Sunday morning that we've got, that we've got everything loaded and ready to go, and we got our talking points, and, 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 and we start blasting it. Then, you know, if we, if we get it sooner, great. But I know there's a lot you got to get done now, and this put us behind the eight ball a little bit, but we still got time. And I encourage, uh, you know, I think, I think we budgeted for, um, some point of purchase uh, materials for the uh, for the local retailers to advertise this program to their customers, and I think I mean that's the, to me that's the coolest thing in this program is is that when the people can get their own customers to buy in, you know it's just it just it just adds it. Good, thank you, Director London. This is a different subject, and I want to bring it up because I have like five percent battery life. But sure. Sean, are we still promoting Small Business Saturday, or is that totally what? 
Can I say something on that? Do you yeah. mind, guys? Well, let me, uh, let, let's go to Sean first, and then I'll come back to you, Matt. Okay. Sean? Yes. So, yes, we will be doing Small Business Saturday. Um, so we're going to be doing some different things. We're gonna, we, I've, I was actually in a meeting with Siren earlier today. We're going to be uh, working on some social media contests uh, to promote that uh, uh, using the gift cards. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I think that these gift cards, the, the contest that we've been doing so far with the gift cards, I think we've, we've seen a ton of responsiveness from. So I think it's, it's a winner to move with. In the past, we've tried a handful of different programs. Some, you know, were kind of hit or miss. Um, so I, I think moving forward with what works, um, you know, and making sure that we can do something uh, that we can, we can pull off and that is COVID appropriate as well. Uh, I think the, the these social media contests with the gift cards, it's digital, it uses social media, and I think though that kind of ticks all the boxes there. So um, that's that's basically kind of how I've been looking at it, and that's to the extent that I've I've gotten some direction uh, from the board. Oh, thank you, uh, Director Riley. Yeah, one of the one of the things that I had thrown out there, and uh, I. I, 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 I I thought it was on the consumer marketing committee agenda for their last meeting, but but I guess there was a, there was a time issue. Was uh, we had made a suggestion that that you know we have this uh, I think it's like thirty six thousand dollars still sitting in the IFKI account, and that that we use a portion of that. I thought it would be a great idea for retailers, whoever wanted to opt in, that we set up a program where the the first ten people into their into their stores or establishments, retailers are not restaurants, not bars. Maybe salons, I don't know, but, but I, you know, I think people make their appointments. I think this is more for retailers because that's what Small Business Saturday is about. Whoever wanted to opt in, that, that we would have it, at, at, whether we set it as a $15 purchase, a $10 purchase. I know different stores are different, whether it's one item, two items. I thought maybe the Consumer Marketing Committee could decide on something that would be egalitarian across the board. And the first 10 people in who met that criteria got a $20 gift card. And we would come out with a sign up, very simple sign up sheet that Sean would get out to everybody and we'd have to get their name and email address and they'd have to give us that. And the first 10 people who qualified by, by the purchase, we then the next day or Monday morning, Sean would get with Yifty and we'd kick out $20 gift cards on top of that to people and drive 10 people to every store. I did the math, you know, if we had 25, if you had 25 people uh, that bought in, Hang on a second. I got something here. I just lost my screen. I would limit to one. They can't go to one store. That They can only do it once, win it once. Okay. Well, and, and whether we could keep track of that, I'm not sure. But again, if somebody's walking around buying different places, I'm not sure. Yeah. But again, I didn't yeah. think through that. But if you had 25 stores, right, and everybody had 10 people at 20 bucks, that's only five grand. I mean, we have 36 grand sitting there. So... I thought that was, you know, something that we could do. And maybe, you know, maybe we make it a $25 gift card. And, and I would throw that out there. And whether that's got to come back to the board in November, and I know we're running out of time. The next meeting is November 18th. That's still a week and a half for Small Business Saturday. I don't know if it's enough time to promote it. I don't know if it's something that, that since the funds have been dedicated already, whether we can do it without full board approval. I don't know. I like it. Okay. Um, well, I don't know how to, I'm not sure how we would proceed on that, Sean. Maybe you could follow up um, and have further discussion and see if you can put some sort of program together. Um, uh, yeah, I, I can try to set up maybe even some kind of a special phone call uh, in which, you know, the committee could discuss. Sure. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. Tim, I'd, I'd like to probably talk to you to see what would we would be able to, you know, go forward with, you know, barring having to go back to the board for anything. You right. Know. That'd be fine, too. That, that'd be great. Well, the worst case scenario is that if, if it had to go back to the board and we want the next scheduled meeting, that's November 18th, you have a week and a half to promote it and get it into place. And whether, whether that's enough or, or not, I don't know, um, you know. It, you, you know, Small Business Saturday is the 28th, so it's 10 days before. Um, I, again, my, my only question would be, you know, because there are so many different stores, what makes, you know, a viable purchase to get this card? And I don't know that you want to have it all over the map. You'd want to have a set, a set line where people knew 
whether it was they had to buy two items or whether they had to buy fifteen dollars worth or ten dollars worth or twenty dollars worth. Well, what I would what I would throw out there is you have a line item budgeted for Small Business Saturday. Okay. Uh, if you're using the funds from that line item, then then I would say it doesn't really need more action by the board. It's part of Small Business Saturday. Uh, and the program just get put together under it. If you're allocating new, more funds or taking funds from somewhere else, then I would say yes, it would need board action. Okay. So depending on- Well, that's good clarification, thank you. Is, then, then that's how we'll bring it forth. Okay, thank I'm looking, you. I'm looking to see what we have dedicated for small. We have $15,000 dedicated for Small Business Saturday, okay? So I don't know. I don't know what else is going to be involved in that, but but what I just threw out there, if you had what did I say? Twenty. I, mean, I don't know how many businesses I used, but it came five thousand. Yeah. Yeah, twenty-five businesses. Okay. That, that included a lot of expenses that we were counting on doing again. So, for instance, last month we or last month last year, uh, in the pre-COVID times, we had a food truck that was parked on Washington that gave out free hot chocolate to anybody who walked up all day. You know, so it was. And, you know, that was part of the expenses, you know, that's not something we could do right now, you know, right. so, okay. uh, but yeah, I, th I think the, you know, I, uh, I'll work with the executive director, we'll get a committee meeting together, and then we can, we can put together a, a good solid use to promote that. Okay. okay. And, and again, right. so, and again, and again, I hate to keep on the gift cards, but, but they work and they're simple and, and, and they're, and there's the only thing that would be on the retailer would be having this, the sign up sheet that, you know, we could easily print out, Sean, you know, Royal Oak DDA sign up sheet, and they get it into you. You go around and collect them on Monday, and we kick them the card. I, th I think you could still do a passport too, and then do your free gift card through a passport program. Good. Okay. Um, so let me just check with staff. Tim, anything else? For this agenda? No. Sean, anything else? Nothing. No. Thank you. Thanks. Anything else from any of the board members? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So so moved. Moved by Director Krieger. Second by Director Yesbik. <coughs> and I will do a quick roll call vote here. Director Krieger. Yes. Director Yesbik. Yes. Director Baglio. Yes. Director London. Yes. Director Rosbeck. Yes. Director Brake. Yes. Director Riley. Yes. And I will vote yes. The motion does pass and we are adjourned. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>